Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. Um, in this video, we're going to discuss flywheels and how to improve your car's performance by altering the flywheel. So, what is the flywheel? Well, it sits on the engine. It's usually part of the clutch assembly and it is a huge metal rotating mass. Why would you have a big heavy weight attached to your engine? Surely the effort it takes to turn it is just a complete waste of time. In a reciprocating piston engine, there is a lot of vibration. The nature of the engine itself just means that there's lots of additional vibrations. So the flywheel actually helps to smooth out some of those vibrations. Otherwise, when the engine tick over gets low, it'll just stall. You remember when you were growing up, you used to have those toy cars with a little flywheel in them and you used to rev them up and then let them go and that energy that was stored would keep the car going. And it's very similar in a conventional road car. The momentum from the engine rotates the flywheel and that mass keeps everything operating smoothly. When you lift off the throttle, you'll notice that the revs decrease very slowly. If the flywheel was lighter, that rev decrease would be much, much faster. And you notice that when you hear a sports car engine, the rev changes are very, very quick. Now on a road car, you really want the economy that comes with having a flywheel and gradual changes. When you come up to a hill, you want the car to keep its momentum going. If you fit a lighter flywheel to your car and you hit a hill, you're going to bog down. You're going to lose a lot of that momentum and you really will have to press the accelerator harder to compensate for that, to keep the car traveling up and down the hill. So there's advantages and disadvantages to going with a lighter flywheel. Are lighter flywheels ideal on all cars? Well, there is an optimum weight for the performance of your car. So you really want the revs to be changing quickly, but not too fast that it makes rev matching quite difficult when you're changing gear. And you certainly don't want to get that effect where it's bogging down on hills or it's prone to stalling at low RPMs and at tick over. So having some mass in the flywheel is a good idea. Now we're also going to discuss dual mass flywheels because these are quite popular and it takes the principle of having a single solid mass and it doubles it. There's a second rotating mass that's attached to the first one by means of a spring assembly and that helps to dampen a lot more vibrations. So those springs take up a lot of the vibrations out of the running of the engine. Now on some engines like a typical diesel engine or an engine that's just inherently out of balance, a V5 comes to mind or three cylinder engines, you really do need all the help you can get to keep it ticking over smoothly. We've heard from people that have taken a diesel engine, for example, and they fitted a single mass lighter flywheel to it and they've really ruined the feel of the car. They're not happy with the running and they have to go back to having a dual mass flywheel. So if you are tempted, do chat with other people that have got the same car as you as to their experiences. Our forums is a great place to go to exchange ideas and expertise with other people so we can all avoid making these same mistakes over and over again. Just because a company is selling a part for your car, it doesn't mean it's a good idea. They're just there to make money and the advertising brochure will always sing the virtues of these things and they may work really well in a motorsport environment but on a road car you've got all sorts of problems that inherently come along with that. So be careful when choosing your flywheel. Generally speaking most cars will benefit from a slightly lighter flywheel. The engine will feel more lively. The reduction in weight is always a good thing because lighter cars handle better and they accelerate better. So you've got to weigh up all of the pros and cons and it's not a mod that I would recommend you just go out and do. If your clutch is going and you need to take that part of the engine off it makes sense to think about upgrades and if you've got a dual mass flywheel it normally makes sense to actually change that dual mass flywheel assembly at the same time you do the clutch, depending on the manufacturer's service schedules. 
but they are prone to fail after a while. They do a lot of work and in really unbalanced engines, they take a lot of abuse. So you'll be saving yourself a further bill down the line if you get the two jobs done at the same time. So we really hope this video has been informative to you. You've learned a little bit about these lightweight flywheels and the benefits of switching to a single mass flywheel, but also some of the problems inherent of dropping your dual mass flywheel and going with a single mass on some engines. Check out the article on our site because we're going to a lot more detail on a make and model specific level and don't forget if you've not subscribed please do so please like this video it really does help us to get out there and don't forget to stay tuned